name is Joshua Echo, and the disease I'll be presenting is called Keith. Today I'll be presenting an introduction, background information, the bacteria coex coexiella, Berniti, um, ways to get Keith fever, the two different stages, the experiment, the treatment, and extra information. Um, Q fever is an international disease caused by the bacterium Coexula beniti. The real name for Q fever is query fever, and it has two stages called the acute stage and the chronic stage. It was first discovered in Brisbane, Australia in 1935 by an outbreak, and then first in the U.S. in 1937 by global in distribution and outbreaks are reported occasionally. Um, there's a possibility for there to be those symptoms shown in a human and then 3% um, of the healthy adult U.S. population can be affected and 10 to 20% of the humans, adults in high risk occupations can also be affected. Q fever resembles a lot of other diseases because it is mostly a uh, fever, but then it has a lot of side symptoms at one or two different stages. Coexula bonuti, which is the bacterium, is resistant to heat, drying, and common disinfectants. It, it has a long survival period and it is spread by wind and dust. Ways to get Q fever is the main the main way to get your fever is the combination of dry placental materials and birth fluid and excreta of infected animals. More ways to get your fever, but they're more rare, is lactic mites, unpasteurized dairy products, and human to human transmission. The main way, the one of the few main ways to get it is by cattle, sheep, and goats. And from those infected animals, you get milk, their urine, and their feces. The acute stage, also known as stage one, it has a high possibility of recovery, so it's not as severe. But then the complications of this is inhalation of the liver and the heart tissue, and also pneumonia and central nervous system complications. More facts about the acute stage is that pregnant women are at higher risk and they could have a miscarriage or preterm delivery. And the fertility rate is very low, it's less than 2%. And then the treatment can shorten the course of the illness, which shortens the intensity of the illness and the length. Chronic stage, also known as stage two, and less than five percent of the people from the acute stage move on to the chronic stage, and, with, and this happens within six weeks after the acute stage, or even years later. Endocarditis is a more severe form of the chronic of the chronic stage, and its fertility rate is twenty-five to sixty percent. And it needs early diagnosis, which means that you have to catch it early before it spreads on through your body and makes, makes the symptoms worse. Um, there's a long-term antibiotic treatment, so you have to be taking the medicines for at least 18 months. There are more forms of the chronic stage, which the aortic in aneurysms, and infections of the bone, the liver, and um, people at the highest risk of chronic of the chronic stage are pregnant women, patients with pre-existing heart valve defects, and immune-supported people. Post Q fever, which is happening after coexistent immunity, the bacteria has the ability to last in the host for a very long time after the symptoms wear off. Um, post Q fever fatigue syndrome happens after Q fever, which is have night sweats, severe headaches, photophobia, um, muscle pain, and joint pain, mood changes, difficulty sleeping, with severe headaches, and constantly occurring fatigue. And 10 to 25 percent of the people with the acute stage move on and have post Q fever fatigue syndrome. 
treatment, or well, one of the treatments for this disease is doxycycline. And doxycycline, the dosage, and even if you take it or not, differs on your age. It is a first line treatment, meaning that that is the first uh, medication that they think of whenever they figure out that you have Q fever. And it is the most effective, the most effective and it needs to be initiated immediately after they realize you have Q fever. And use of any other antibiotic first results in um, results in severe illness and has a higher risk of the patients. Adults should be taking 100 milligrams of doxycycline every 12 hours and 200 milligrams of hydro hydroxychlorine every eight hours. The standard duration of this treatment of both of them is 18 months. And use the doxycycline is recommended and it doesn't stain teeth, but the benefits of doxycycline is greater than the risk of stain. The illness gets more severe if you get off of the medication, take your dosage wrong, or if you don't take them at all, that your illness gets more severe and the symptoms get more severe. And then code tri trimoxazole is another treatment which is for children under eight years old and if the illness is mild. So it's not as severe, but it's not very um, it's not as severe as children should be taking less than if they were less than hundred pounds, it should be taking twice a day of doxycycline. They are treated for at least three days after the fever happens, which is one of the first symptoms. And the standard duration of this is two to three weeks. Some extra information on the fever. The first three days of disease within 27 hours is if failure to respond to suggest that the patient's condition could be due to could not be due to key fever. So if there is a failure to resist the disease, that means that there could be another bacterium or virus inside or infection inside of you that they are not aware of. So they have to do further diagnosis to figure that out. And resistance to doxycycline has not been documented, meaning that out of all the patients that have been taking this medication, that they have not documented that any of them have any allergic reactions or any type of resistance to it. And humans are susceptible to this disease and only a few organisms can cause an infection. Um, severely ill patients may require a longer period before the fever resolves. So that 18 months I was talking about can turn into 24 or 36, depending on how severe your illness is. My experiment, a quantitative micro risk assessment assesses the risk of getting infected. And this was within the tourist season. So they were trying to tell the tourists to stay 20 kilometers away from infected farms in the area, which this was from May to August. This was in the Netherlands, and key fever is more the more cases of key fever in the Netherlands, and we're not doing our research. Most of the journal articles were referencing to the Netherlands a lot. And when you compromise people by a higher risk of contracting this disease. So during the experiment, they were um, using the immune com compromised people and regular people and walking, putting them on bikes near the infected farms and seeing how easily that you ca they caught the disease and how fast the symptoms show showed up. And they were calculating the exposure in, in the infected areas. So they were seeing what, what, the, what areas were most affected. My conclusion is that um, I gave you an introduction background information, symptoms, two stages, the two stages of this disease, ways to get a key fever, maybe the bacterium, colorectal, immunity, treatments, and extra information. And this is my citation, and this concludes my presentation. Are there any questions? Thank you.